Mexican sunflower, also known as Tythonia diversifolia, is a very unique plant. On one hand, you have its ornamental qualities, growing to a height of 20 feet in one season, and producing clusters of orangey-yellow, medium-sized flowers. On the other hand, you have its mysterious ability to synthesize macronutrients and produce biomass even when growing in poor soil. In southern states, where weather is consistently warm, Mexican sunflower has become the permaculture gardener's best friend being used as a source of abundant mulch and in some cases as an alternative to green fertilizers, such as animal manure. Based on current studies, the leaves and stems of the plant can provide a significantly higher level of fertility to the soil per pound than chicken or cow manure, even when wet. Considering that most leaves in nature contain on average 70% water, the macronutrient levels found in the foliage are truly amazing keeping livestock-type animals can attract a host of additional pests to the garden, not to mention the feed costs and the extra labor involved, the idea of using Mexican sunflower as an alternative instantly appealed to me. And this series of videos will go into detail in documenting the progress of my plants and how they affect my garden. Early on in this journey, it has already become quite apparent that Mexican sunflower is not only hardy, but very easy to propagate. All of the plants that you are currently seeing originally started as two 10-inch woody cuttings purchased from a gardener on Etsy. What makes this even more incredible is the fact that in less than a year, those two cuttings have transformed into seven large plants, all standing anywhere from four to seven feet tall. In fact, most of them already have rough bark and a woody base. After planting the original two cuttings from Etsy, I had a 4 by 4 foot hedge in what seemed like a month, and that's without additional soil amendments, fertilizer, or even regular waterings. Seeing how well the plant was growing, I was ready to start some propagation experiments. When looking for information on the propagation process, I found a lot of results, most of which advise that you specifically use woody stem cuttings, as they have more energy stored up in the cambium for rooting. However, my impatience got the best of me, and I decided to cut off six or so large green stems, ranging from two to three feet in length. I simply shoved them into the ground and made sure that at least six to eight inches was underneath the soil. I didn't expect much, but to my surprise, every single one rooted and grew really well. The green stems with multiple branches, around two feet in height, rooted the best, likely due to their extra mass. But even the wispiest green cutting took root. The top 90% of the wispy cutting dried up and died back, but a single node at the soil level began to develop into a bold and strong plant. All of the green cuttings were planted in an area with partial shade to reduce potential stress, and it seems to have been quite effective. So far, I've only planted one woody cutting in full sun. Even with the extra energy saved up in the cambium, this cutting sat dormant for two months without leaves, and only recently has started to put on new growth. So I'd strongly advise, whether or not your cuttings are green or woody, that you propagate them in the shade. And if you use green cuttings, make sure they are at least two feet in length. And remember, the branchier, the better. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any unanswered questions. And subscribe if you'd like to see how I end up using these plants in the near future.